Hi everyone, it's Erin from the Provincial Farmhouse. In today's video, I'm going to be doing some French country wall art using recycled decoupage paper and my custom craft blanks. I'd like to introduce you to the second design of my craft blanks range. This is the ornate oval frame. Now you have the outside frame portion, you have the inside oval portion in case you would like to raise the design in the center or you can leave that out. And then of course you have the frame blank back. This design was inspired by vintage frames. I really wanted something that you could use in the portrait mode or that you could turn on the side and use it in landscape. The ornate oval frame blank is going to be available in the large size, which is the design I just showed you. This is the medium and this is the small. So you could definitely create a beautiful gallery wall out of these. I'm going to be showing you how to decorate them in three different ways. I'm going to begin by using Paint Couture's Simply White Chalk Paint. I'm going to be adding this to the back of each of the craft blanks. I ended up doing three coats to get the coverage that I wanted. It's also recommended that you use a primer if you are worried about bleed through and you're using lots of light colors. I'm using white on my base because I'm going to be doing some decoupage over the top and white is always a really good background to ensure that the colors of the decoupage paper show to their best advantage. Today I'm going to be using Recycled's Spring Masterboard design and I have the large outer frame design there that I've positioned over the top of the design that I want and I'm just going to trace a light lead pencil line around the section that we're going to use. I am going to trim out that entire rectangle first though to make cutting the rest of the design out a bit easier. Once I have that section cut out, I'm going to use my scissors to go in and cut around that lead pencil line. I'm using decoupage paper today, but you could definitely use transfers, stamps, napkins, anything really with these craft blanks. Once I have that cut out, I'm going to use an eraser to remove the lead pencil lines. The next step is optional, but I took my lead pencil out, laid the frame over the top of the base and did a light oval outline as a guide for where my decoupage paper would go. I then took out Paint Couture's decoupage medium in matte and I'm going to lay down an even coat. Once I have that area covered, I'm going to press my decoupage paper into the product and gently smooth it down. I'm then going to go back over the top of it with my decoupage medium again to seal it all in. Now you can still see that lead pencil line in the background. I don't mind that because I'm going to be using some antiquing glaze anyway later, but if that bothers you, just make sure you erase it before you get to that step. When that was dry, I used some Gorilla Super Glue on the back portion of the frame and then I'm going to be flipping that over and we're going to glue that in place. If you want your frame to be a different color, I recommend painting that first before gluing it down. I then used a wet wipe to wipe off any excess glue. When the glue was dry, I took out Paint Couture's Van Dyke Brown Glaze and I'm going to be going over the top of the entire frame, the raised frame part, the recessed part as well. I'm just adding that glaze all over the outside portion of that design. When I was happy with how much product was on my project, I took out a wet wipe and started wiping some of it back. I also added some more glaze to the inside of the design to give it that vintage look. When the glaze was dry, I took out Simply White chalk paint and I am lightly brushing that over the top of the raised frame section. I'm not going for full coverage. I still wanna be able to see that wood tone underneath. We're going for a weathered and worn vintage frame look here. I ended up doing two coats like this. I just wanted to say a really big thank you for all of the wonderful feedback on the first craft blank that I released in a previous video. I had a lot of people from overseas asking if I would ship internationally. I'm not quite set up for that just yet, but if you are interested, please leave a comment and I will contact you with my email address so that we can work out a shipping quote. But thanks so much guys, your opinions and your support just means so much to me. Once the paint was completely dry, I then took out the wet wipe that I was using with the glaze and I'm just going to lightly dab that over the top of the dry paint to give it a bit of an aged appearance. Mm -hmm. 
when that was dry, I took out Paint Couture's Bronze Luxe Metallic and I'm going to be going in and painting specific portions of the frame. I really love the ornate details that I was able to incorporate into this design and I really wanna highlight those here with this beautiful metallic paint. So I'm just going to continue working my way around the frame, really picking out those beautiful details. If bronze isn't for you, you could come in with a copper or a silver instead if you wanted to achieve a similar look. These blanks can definitely be used to create a beautiful gallery wall, but I also think that the smaller design would look perfect as a Christmas ornament, decorated and looking festive. I think it would look just beautiful in a Christmas tree. When the bronze in those sections was dry, I then focused my attention on the outside border of our frame and I'm going to be adding that bronze all the way around the outside of the design. When that was dry, I then took out some ideas for hanging attachments. You could definitely use these little sawtooth hangers. These craft blanks are light, so hot glue could definitely be used to attach them to the back. Or there's also these other little hanging attachments as well. Obviously, you wouldn't use a screw. You'd just be using hot glue or super glue. I, however, am going to be using this chiffon ribbon that I had in my stash and I'm going to be using hot glue to attach it to the back. I'm just going to be laying down a strip of that glue and then pressing the ends of the ribbon into the hot glue. And then as a way of sort of tidying up the ends, I'm going to be adding a little bit more glue as well uh, on top of the ribbon and then folding the ribbon back on itself. Again, just to give it a bit more of a tidier look. And here's a look at our first finished project. I'm really pleased with how this turned out, but let me know what you think of the large ornate oval frame design. For the medium sized frame design, I'm actually gonna turn it on the side and have it landscape. And I'm really loving this little bird here with the nest. So I'm going to trace around the inside of the oval frame so I know where to cut. And then once I'm happy with that, I am going to trim that to size. As this is a smaller frame design, I was able to position the decoupage paper in the center and then lift up one half and lay down some product instead of having to draw a lead pencil line. I'm then going to gently push my paper into the decoupage medium. Then I'm going to lift up the other side and lay down some more product and repeat that same process. I'm then going to brush on another layer of the decoupage medium to seal it all in. When the decoupage medium was dry, I took out pitch black chalk paint and I'm going to go around the entire outside border and paint it with that black tone. And I'm being careful not to go too much over the top of the decoupage paper design. For this particular piece, I decided to go a little bit more moody, a little bit of dark academia. So that is the beauty of these craft blanks is that you can customize them and turn them into whatever style item you wanna create. Once I finished with the base, I also took that same pitch black chalk paint and I'm going to be adding one coat of that over the top of the external frame piece. Now I probably could have gone directly in with the color that I'm using next, but I really like to have some of that black peeking through underneath to create a worn look. When that was dry, I took out my bronze luxe metallic and I'm going to be dabbing that beautiful metallic on top of the dry black frame. I am happy for some of that black to peek through. That's going to add to the weathered and worn look. And I'm just going to be doing one coat of the metallic uh, over the top of the entire outside frame. When the bronze was dry, I used some Gorilla Super Glue on the back part of the outside frame design. And then I'm going to carefully flip that over and put that in position. When that was secure, I then went around the outside border of the craft blank with that same bronze.
I am also going to be using that same chiffon ribbon and hot glue method that I used for the first project. And here's a look at our second finished artwork. I love how this turned out. I think that that beautiful bronze metallic really highlights the details in this oval craft blank. Let me know what you think of this in the comments. For our final smaller frame design, I decided to use these sweet little birds and I'm just going to draw an oval on the inside just like we did before so that I know exactly how much I need to cut out. I'm then going to trim out that particular piece to make it a little bit easier to then go in and cut out the oval shape. I'm then going to be using Paint Couture's Decoupage Medium in matte to adhere the paper down just like I did before, working with half of the paper to start off with. This time I did use a ball of cling wrap to smooth out a few of the wrinkles. I'm then going to attach the other side and then use my brush with some product on it to go over the top and seal it all in. When that was dry, I took out Paint Couture's Abundance Mineral Paint and I'm going to be going around the outside border, around the outside of that decoupage that we have down with that beautiful blue green tone. And I'm going to end up doing two coats of this. When my paint was dry, I laid the outside frame over the top of our blank and I actually really love the wood tone mixed with the color. So this is one idea for using these designs. The color really does look great with the wood, but I'm going to go in now with the Simply White chalk paint and I'm going to be applying three coats of that over the top. I just really want that bright pop of white so that it will also brighten up the center as well. It uh, just suits my project a little bit better, but it does just go to show that there are so many color combinations that you can do with this particular craft blank design. When that was dry, I took out my Gorilla Super Glue and I'm going to add glue around the external border and the internal and then I'm going to flip it over and position it in place. I then went around the edges with that same Simply White chalk paint so that we could have a nice clean edge and border. When that was dry, I added that same chiffon ribbon just like we did before and then obviously tidied up the edges. And here's a look at our final project. I'm loving how delicate this looks with the beautiful white external frame over the blue. Let me know what you think of this in the comments. I really hope that you've enjoyed today's videos and it's given you some ideas on how you can decorate craft blanks and create some wall decor for your home. Let me know if you had a favorite project from today. If you enjoyed today's video, I would really appreciate it if you would hit that like button, comment and share it out. If you haven't already, I would love it if you would hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any of our videos. You can find most of the products used today, including my new ornate oval frame craft blank on my website, theprovincialfarmhouse.com.au. Thanks for watching.